to see like if some of our members are on not and we can start on the conversation as usual i think that you know one of the things some people were messaging before like ala you said coffee time like are you not drinking coffee right now no <laughs> no ramadan means no coffee no water all day no coffee for me no water um, like from sundown and till like sun's out. Opposite. So, yeah. Uh, sun up, sundown. Sun up, sundown. Um, I'm still like. You need and, coffee. Yeah, I'm still needing coffee. I just woke up. <laughs> I just woke up from my nap. But it's uh. Let's see. What are you looking for? I want to go to the control room. No? I don't know. I'm going to check this out so I can see how. No, not, not this. What? Why are, you, why, why are you doing this to me? Breathing? Well, breathing? <laughs> we are breathing. We cannot focus without breathing. We cannot function without breathing. We are breathing. No? Breathing. <laughs> we are breathing. It looks like it is, it is on. Yeah, Focus no kidding. That's why I was trying to say, like, you could just talk about some of the stuff that people have asked about before. It doesn't necessarily have to be so anything happening in line. So what's the other stuff that, like, people are... Well, I know, like, people have asked before, you know, other than not being able to, to like have coffee or drink during Ramadan, you know, what, how do you train during Ramadan? Like how does, how does an elite athlete train whenever they're not drinking and not eating all day? My situation right not now? Not <laughs> we, we all can see your belly right now, but during let's say every other year for the last 20 years. Okay, during COVID <laughs> is an exceptional situation. <laughs> Okay, because all the training, it's canceled. Right, so, right. so COVID is that. Normal, normal Ramadan is the last 20 years, like when you've had Ramadan, but you have either Pan Ams right after, or you used to have African Championships right after, like, you know. Also, the best, like, one of my, first, I'm going to say, like, it's not healthy to train where you can't drink, right? Where you can't have, like, some liquid into your body, especially like fasting for 15 or 16 hours without like drinking any water or like eating anything so but like one of the favorite time or like the best times that like a person that is fasting and during Ramadan that can't train it's literally like an hour before uh, break before fast. breaking the fast but the training is not really like gonna be intense. It should be like just like something that it's light that's gonna make you moving and doing like little 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 stuff. Like you do a lot of your technical sessions. Then. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I know that just because I've been around you for a bunch of years, uh, you usually will do like another session later at night, right? Like a yep. more intense session once you have some liquids in your body. Yeah, of course you have to like. Well, I have multiple like multiple like sessions that I do, you know. And first one is uh, a technical techni technical session. It's break bef fast. before breaking the fast, mm -hmm. right? And then and then you break your fast and you like do your prayer and you hang out with family or friends. Yeah. And then it's like midnight or, or like around then you, you go do your 
right? Yeah. So the first session that I do is like literally an hour before. If you repeat the exact sentence I just said, I will, I will kill you. <laughs> what is it for? I, literally, I do um, an hour before. An hour, an hour before. Can you do a night, a really hard session? Yes. Yes, that's great. So that's how it looks. Because like, you're asking me a question and you're answering it. Like, well, it's not like you're like distracted. So I'm not distracted. I'm trying to get this going. That's it. It is going. No, it it's like going. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to put it in a different social media okay. stuff so more people can see it. Congratulations. Do you know that uh, my, my friends from Hasbro were texting in a group chat? They were like, Scott, did you send in questions for all? I don't know what kind of questions Scott's going to be asking. Any questions for Scott. Scott's going to be asking about like, cookies, beer, all stuff <laughs> like that, all types of things. Silliness? Yeah. All your favorite things? So, yeah, but like during Ramadan, it's the focus is not really into training, especially for a Muslim that like really like practice this. Yeah, of yeah, it's like the focus is not like really in training, but if you have like some sort of a big events, you need to stay in shape, you need to keep like keep yourself like in a, in a good position where you can be able to maintain your yeah i mean it's your, your form you know month, but if you're, yeah. if you're having big goals but if you, you yeah. need to stay focused okay so the moment that you stay in a focus on this is you train like an hour before like either a light jog a light ochikomi like um stretching yoga like technical session where like you can just like focus on uh, visualizing things and seeing it you know mm -hmm. and mental training. yeah mental training then the second hard session which is going to be the main focus session it's going to be like at midnight like either at midnight because i will say i prefer midnight because when 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 you break the fast you have around two hours to the prayer then you go for your prayer then after that you have like another break so start your breaking your fast. Uh, start like uh, getting your support. So 12 a.m. is the perfect time. You already digest the food that you already eat at like six or eight or whatever. Like when you break your fast. So uh, it depends on the on the time of the year. Yeah, I know. It keeps changing. Never six though. No. I feel like it's like seven. Or eight. No, it's sometimes like in January it will go back really? to five, six, four. Like yes, because the time change. Yeah, but the it's sun's like that, that, that's darker for longer in January. It's like when it's the longest. Yeah, but like it keeps changing. The time keeps changing. Is the same. Is the same as. Uh, how am I gonna say? It's the same as like when we said like every every year, Ramadan moved back with eleven days, 11 days it's a, it's right? Because it's a lunar calendar, so the time keeps changing too. So if the sun goes down like at eight during the during now like mm -hmm. during April and May, in January February oh, it's yeah, gonna be it's like at five or six. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, like Norway, it's like dark all the time when we were visiting your aunt. Yeah. And she's like, the sun is out for three hours. Well, so, so <laughs> this is awful. Well, so this is how it goes, you know. Like this, then you have to readjust. But like as of now, I'm talking about this time right now. Yeah. The best time is like you train at twelve again. You do like a light. Uh, you can do like a judo session. You can do a lifting session. You can do whatever like hard session that you can because you already your body. Again. Your body have energy. Uh, you're drinking water. You're, you're not gonna be yeah. You're hydrated, and you also uh, like your brain is more like. Awake. Awake, and you can do stuff. Right. You know, so that that's what like. Yeah, that's what worked for you. Worked for me, and uh, I've I've done it so many. I've done it so many times. So many Ramadans that I was like training, uh, just right before. Again, it's not just like training that's gonna affect your your your, your training. It's also the food that you're gonna eat. Yeah. Because. During Ramadan, a lot of, of our, what I'm going to say, a lot of our, like, um, people from my culture, 
they do eat differently than normal. Normal. Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of like a lot of people they do eat like a lot of cookies, you know, a lot of sweets, you know. And what happens to you when you eat all the sweets, like yeah, you get the sugar burns. Sugar sugar yeah. goes yeah. up. Yeah. And you're like, you crash and burn, right? Exactly. You're like, you can't even move. So right. that's what you need to have, like a healthier meal right. when you break your fast, so you can have like more energy to to do your prayer and to train. Yeah. So. You know, you, like when we had Ramadan in Morocco, like a lot of your mom's meals is like meat or fish with lots of veggies. I mean, I know it's what I try to do terribly, but. Um, well, that it's way, just gonna. That way you have like a, a well-rounded yeah, meal. Yeah, it's just gonna depend. It's just gonna depend from. It's just gonna depends from a, from a person to a person. Yeah, so, so it's just gonna depends from a house to a house. Yeah, of course. So I know that's. Oh, Travis. Oh, good point, Travis. Good point, Travis. I don't. I don't know. Like we can't call him, we can't give him a call. Oh yeah. And how is it living with Allah Travis, while he's cutting when weight? When Allah is cutting weight, he is like a, a, a wild animal and he's totally oblivious to it. He gets so cranky. Usually he's great until the day the day he's cutting weight. That's the only day he's bad. But that day he's so cranky. So when we would travel to tournaments together, um, usually the cutting weight day, I will try to be at him for as much as possible because he's so cranky that whole day. He'll just be complaining like, oh, you've never known. But like, I'm making weight the same day. Like, I know I literally go do the same exact thing. And he, he, it would be like the world is ending. He's like, oh, I have never had food before. But he like had breakfast. So <laughs> he's so crouchy when he gets that food for like more than four hours. Oh, it's my favorite thing. You're so grouchy. You're kind of making uh, she, th she thinks like she thinks you like are. that. No. You are. You think? You're really, really happy when you get to eat after you weigh in. Yeah, because I, I cut like around seven to eight kilos. I didn't say like. No, you're not. You cut in like what quarter of a kilo? I cut like two kilos. Okay, so seven and eight. For a lady, that's a lot. Eight. That's sixteen pounds. That's your fault for being way overweight all the time. You should only be cutting like four kilos max. Well, 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 cranky well. Cranky, I am. Love cookies. No, I just like I'm at the stage. I'm at a stage of my life that I'm gonna say it again. I'm at a stage of my life that I'm gonna enjoy everything that I want. I'm not like I've cut. I've cut weight so many years. I've cut weight for so many, so many times. You know, I've. I've never missed a weight in my entire life. So you can say whatever you want. That you're cranky when, you're that cutting. you can say whatever you want <laughs> that I am cranky and whatever. But like at the time, at the show time, I'm always on weight, I'm always on time, I'm always doing my thing. I'm always showing up to events. No, I agree with you, I'm just answering Travis's lovely question. He's cranky. He gets cranky, Travis. <laughs> he's so cranky. Like my favorite part of that day is right when he makes weight. Cause it's like watching a little kid in a candy store when he gets to drink and eat again. He like that big smile comes back. And he's like, oh, oh, what is this food? Oh, can I please have some more? It's my favorite. That's my favorite part. Of it. Everyone, everyone that cuts weight is like that. Not like you, not like you, not like. <laughs> you get so happy. Every, every, everyone is happy when he gets food. So. But like, uh, going back to our topic. That yes, they know. Is, I want you to talk to him about Ryan Vargas and his, his love for Ryan Vargas. I do not know. Well, Ryan Vargas is not going to be here today unless if he is looking at our stream. I don't know. Travis, should we get him to send you like an autographed poster for your birthday? But like, you can you can ask whatever question about like Trav uh, about like Vargas. And what well, we're gonna make sure that he sees it and send you a personalized, send you a personalized letter, letter from him because <laughs> I think that you love him so much. <laughs> Next time he'll be here, 
I probably like let him train with you and bring him into you. So. Yeah, you can you can show him your jujitsu tricks and he can show you his judo tricks, Trav. He can also show you his jujitsu tricks because uh, tra uh, if you don't know, like Lake Vargas is a brown belt in jujitsu under Bruno Mofsin, which is like back in Miami. So he's he's really good. His jujitsu is really good too. So what? What's your favorite kind of cookies? <laughs> Travis. Are they those like Moroccan ones with the honey? Uh, yes. I do have a favorite cookies. <laughs> but uh, it's Moroccan cookie. I don't know how to call it though. It's um, it's like those things that like filled with uh, It's like nuts, but like what kind of nuts? almond nuts? Oh, yeah, almonds. yeah, almond nuts, and it's like circle with I don't know, but like it's filled with honey, almond nuts, and all that stuff. That's all my favorite. It's like cookies. a phyllo doll that's like rolled like a triangle, and it's so sticky because of all the honey. Yeah. Oh, they're ridiculous. So those are like my favorite cookies. I want to sign for auto of him <laughs> throwing out a different training. It's never gonna happen. Uh. Okay. <laughs> and then you're just gonna keep waiting on the wait list. But I, I can make that happen if I will let it. You know. Unless unless if I'm getting old, because I'm getting older, he's getting he's younger. So if he's gonna throw me in real life, maybe in f another few years, but not now. Not a few years. Not now. Maybe two, three other years. Not now. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> But I don't know if he's looking at this right now. But if he's looking, we can we can we can, we can send him that. Yeah, I'm sure he'll love that, Travis. <laughs> I'm but to think of some of the other questions that some people had had sent earlier. Um. Uh, I know that. Tom had asked about um, weight cutting in general, like for tournament weight cutting, like how people should or shouldn't go about it. So each one, each one is different. Each body type of people is different. First, I am not doctor or nutritionist or anything that like specialize in the field. I'm just a normal person and I'm a professional athlete that used to cut weight and I cut it differently because I was exposed to different methods of cutting weight so what I do personally is as I say again at this time of my life of my lifetime is I just do eat whatever I know and I so just that's, right. that's not a proper right so so go back to like the the, the proper way that you you understood how to do it when you were not older. In your no, I'm life. just like say I'm just saying in general, but yeah. like yeah, just yeah. trying to generalize things. So when when well, it's still like if I want to do it right and I want to cut weight right, I have to do it right. So if I'm cutting four, it depends on how much weight I am cutting. If I'm cutting four pounds, that's for me. It's kind of like I will just go for a run. Right, because you can lose the four pounds. Right, right, but what what can what can how can I cut that four pounds? Because I'm like I'm preparing for that. I do drink a lot of water during the week. The week that that week, the week before, two weeks before, I'm drinking and loading with water. Yeah. So I drink as much as I can. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I keep my body filled with water. Yeah. So whenever like I am running, I can lose that water like easily. Easily. Yeah. So I don't have any trouble like cutting that way and then when you're running you're not like running for distance you do like so i do intervals yep. so the best way to cut the cut weight it's not like just keep running 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 for hours no it's like you need to up like the way that i do it is like i get my uh, my heart rate goes up so i do like a 30 seconds run as fast as i can like i would just like run Sprint. sprinting yep. for 30 seconds Maybe I do 15 seconds 
just active movement, then I repeat it and I go about it for like time. So the time that I do is I do 10 minute intervals. Yeah. It goes like 30, 30, 30 seconds yeah. as fast right. as you yeah. can. So I do like around maybe three to four sets. Yeah. And after that I do some stretching. Mm -hmm. So I can keep my body like cooling off and sweating and sweating and in that that I'm like What well, I'm gonna say it's like I'm, I'm cutting like three pounds yeah. three to between three to four pounds easily cutting it like that yeah. in in a 30 minutes in a 30 minutes like and like just to speak like what you were talking about everybody's body's different right? yeah like I know for me like as a female it's way harder to lose four pounds. Mm -hmm. So for me to lose four pounds, mm -hmm. I could do that 30 minute workout and I'll lose a pound and a half. And yeah. like, if it's that time of month, I'll lose like half a pound. Yeah. So really being aware of like what your body is capable of and how it reacts, I think is critical. Like knowing what kind of layers you need to put on and in what order you need to put them on to help get the sweat going. Well, it's, it's not just about the layers, you know. It's about like what you're putting into your body first. What are you putting in your body during the week or during the two weeks or during right. the three like weeks. Not a lot of salt. Right. So first the things that like you need to focus on is eating less carbs that like the majority of people are do eat, you know. So right. you break your like you break everything that you're gonna eat in a half. So I'm not gonna say don't eat anything. No, eat. So if you eat bread, instead of eating a big circle, like a whole piece of bread, just cut it in half, eat a half of it during that day, during that week. Well, I, I, and I focus more on like during that week, just like tons and tons of vegetables. Like, it, like, as I say again, it de it depends on people. It de I like understand. that's how you cut that's weight. What I'm but out. like I'm talking about, like how do I cut weight? Yeah. I don't. I do not like. You cut calories. Yes, I cut calories. So and I count my calories. The calories that I do take in the last two weeks is. Uh, oh, Leticia, we'll get your questions in a minute. Okay. Hey, Omar. What's up? Um, the way that I cut my calorie, the way that I do my calories, the last two weeks, I keep myself on the 15,000 calorie. Uh, 1,500. 15,000? No. 100 and, like 1,500. Sorry. 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 Um, I keep myself on the 1,500 calories. Yeah. Because, okay, so the 1,500 calories, if you measure it, it's, it's not a lot. But again, it's okay amount of food that you can function. So could be like if you want to just like get an orange and a banana and whatever, like a piece of toast with whatever, whatever you're gonna do it, and a cup of coffee. That's a 500 calorie right there. Yeah. Okay. Or you could do or, a giant, giant salad. Or you can just go to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> And Dunkin' Donuts and have a mocha latte, which is gonna be like a 700, 800 calories. It just depends on the person and how he, right. how he goes right. in about cutting weight. So if I'm if I'm starving and I know that I have fifteen, uh, I have a hundred, uh, fifteen hundred, right, calories a day, then I'm I'm craving a mocha. I'm gonna get a mocha. I know. Well, you're you're drinking that. I'm like having this like massive salad with all these vegetables yeah because i was craving my body's craving that mocha right, craving so that sugar so i would go for what i'm craving yeah. so that way i'm like okay you i got my me. thing i have like that 700 i still have the other one then i can just like manage how i can get my food intake from plus i do drink a lot of water between I'm gonna say three liters to four or five liters right. which is like a gallon a gallon a gallon, gallon and a half it, it's just like that. That's why, like, when I'm cutting weight, it's easier. It's easier, like. And I know the other thing is, like, you know, I've talked with a lot of, like, uh, women have different perspectives on this, but especially, like, a uh, preteen or a young teenage girl, like, really not cutting weight, your body is changing so much so fast at that age, and your hormones are being so crazy when you're, like, 13, 14. Like, 
it's really hard to to think about even cutting weight at all when you're yeah, at a young, like, a I, young d- I do not I do not suggest for young females or young males to cut weight exactly. at that age. That's kinda, that's the other thing. The body's growing. Yeah. The body's growing. Let and it's grow. like, let it grow. Let it yeah. be. Let yeah. it be. Focus and that's on your so, technique. Right. Yeah. Focus on your technique. Focus on your, your training. Get better at things. When you focus on getting better, you're going to get better. Focus on cutting weight, you're going to stay cutting weight. Like, you can cut weight all your life when you're a grown man, when you're like a grown woman, you know? A grown woman, 21, 22, you're good. I'm going to say a man, 21, 22, you're good. Okay, now you can cut weight. 19, 18, 17, 16, 13 is just a waste of time. Like, you can't, like, there's levels of cutting weight. Okay, if you're cutting one or two kilos, okay, it's okay. But you're cutting four, five, six kilos, no, go like if, up. And I feel like if you're a girl, it's more than, like, a pound. Like, don't even bother. Then, I'm, I'm going to say you it's low. You will never know because your body I'm will like, never. <laughs> of course, I will never know. Oh, uh, like, pounds. what should I be focusing on in and out? for priorities. This is Leticia, I don't know. Yeah, Leticia, what advice you give to white belts as priorities, what should you be focusing on now? Uh, break falls. <laughs> you can't do, you can't practice break falls at home right now, but like this is in general. Oh, just in general? So like just in general, as a white belt. You should focus on break falls. That's the main thing. Why? Why you should be focusing on break falls? You don't want to get injured. Judo? It's a top sport. If you don't know how to fall, if not, you're not getting used to the mat, right? You're not familiar with the mat, you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get hurt, you will never get back to the mat. So, first things people should be doing is focusing on the break falls, which is like, that's what we go, what we do when someone just walks in, we spend like an hour, Whatever. So like, you come in a corner and really make sure they're comfy that they're falling. Comfy falling. That they, and if they have experienced falling in the past, we make sure that they are still capable of falling so that their head's not hitting the mat and they're, you know, falling on the side. I mean, Leticia knows this for a fact. That's why yeah. she started doing some judo because she was really uncomfy taking falls. Taking falls. Right. So but, like, but, like, as soon as you, as soon as you're comfortable, like... Taking falling, fall. taking falls. But if you're a then, wrestler, you're comfy taking falls. Right. <laughs> like, there's a lot of people that get more acclimated to it quicker. Yeah. You know, once you teach them the technique. So as soon as you like, you know how to break the falls, then you move on to the second step, which is knowing uh, the judo part, like the techniques, you know, the body movements, how to move to get to the techniques, where to put your hand, where to place your hand, how to move with the body, with a person, when you can do the, uh, the technique, when not. And, and this is like steps to judo, but this is the first step. Break falls, body movements, balance, then techniques. So I think her question is like while at home with all the COVID going on, like what are the key things to focus on? while she's like how should she prioritize like if you say strength train do yoga work on balance work on flexibility like what's number one like as as of now as of now body movements and techniques uh, right now and all the techniques that we do during our zoom classes are like those are like you just need to be specific on choosing the technique so the the ashi was a technique the te was a technique uh, those are the things that like she should be focused on because those are easy first second it's you can do them anywhere everywhere with whatever so like people that aren't in our zoom classes I mean they just work their technique on their own with yeah. bands, bands. Or in their house. you can do it with the bands if you want to like add resistance you can do it by yourself because if you want to work on a proper technique so all the little, details, all the little, like little things that we your toe, yeah. where, what angle to push your hands at, yeah, where just, your head is looking, the stuff you like forget about when you're in the, in the groove and with people fighting back. Hey, Sufian. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you just like should be doing just that, focusing on. Like I, I remember when I was growing up, I was doing tennis for a while and my dad had gotten me this like, 
visualization in tennis video. And it was all about before you're hitting the ball, visualizing where you want the ball to go. And there was all the science behind, um, you know, that, that mental focus improving your placement. Yeah. And that you could even do it when you aren't at tennis practice because the more you would visualize your like forehand stroke with the ball ending in a specific spot, then when you go to do it, your body had built up some of that muscle memory. So it's kind of the same idea when you're practicing the techniques on your own. If you're practicing it and visualizing doing it very cleanly with your entire body all in the spots that you want them to be, when you go to execute it on a real person, like you've built up the muscle memory and you're able to execute it properly. You weren't listening, you were checking for questions. No. I, I, <laughs> no, no. Like you said, that you, everything you say, Kristen. No. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course that I love everything that you say. <laughs> just like it was more than a sentence, so I so doubt. <laughs> no, I'm just like trying to think about like what how can I answer? Like you I don't, don't have to answer. Why? You can just be like, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> It should be like open. It should be open. Just like question, answer. That's how it goes, right? That's how it's going. That's how it should be going. Right? Okay. I think that I've... What do you recommend to eat between fights in competition? Oh, that's a good question. Good question, Sufian. Good question. So, it may, may seem a little bit odd for you, but... When I'm competing, right? When I'm competing, I do like eat something that has like a sweet and carbs. Car so I eat bananas, bananas during competition. So because you can't eat that much, you're like you're like a couple bites yeah. Again. Your your body is your body's gonna be like in a state that you can't really eat that much, you know. So you want like something that it's going to be light and it's going to help you go during the day and keep you like from like collapsing you yeah, know a little sugar rush, little, a little. right so i do recommend like a piece of toast that like has uh some peanut butter and jelly yeah, those are usually bring like a like, peanut butter jelly sandwich peanut butter and jelly sandwiches i get uh we say like bananas oranges nuts uh oh, date Nuts, dates, uh, water, uh, I would say like uh, green tea. Green tea is very good. Uh, green tea is essential and it's really good for you. Especially if you like, if you like from where I come from, like we drink tea a lot, you know. So for me, hot tea at the, at the time, at the tournaments, I have like a little mug like that or whatever, like those uh, thermos, right, that have tea on it and with like peanut butter sandwiches that's it that's how that's how i get through my day i know yeah. um, one of my favorite one of my favorite uh tournaments ever one of my friends to like give themselves a boost they mm -hmm. always bring like a snickers bar with them i can never like have that much chocolate when i'm competing but it was the same idea it had a little protein it had a little yeah. sugar it had a little nuts like all in one and uh, they like take a bite of it between matches and they forgot, they like put it in their gi and they forgot that it was uh. there and they went out to fight. It was like a little, it was a local tournament. But yeah. when they were fighting the Snickers bar, Just <laughs> and the ref picked it up and was like, do you need a Snickers break? <laughs> it was like the greatest. Oh, there's, <laughs> the greatest there's, so, there's so many ways, there's so many ways you can go about it. Like so many people have different tastes different like type now again you're not cutting weight at that moment you're being just like to get your energy energy so a lot of people either they do uh, other athletes you know i've seen so many athletes having snicker bars uh coca-cola like you know pepsi you know soda you know for some sugar you know, for me personally, I don't like Gatorade, you know, 
for me, like all of that, like my stomach just get. If I drink that, I will just like go after and, and, and throw it up. So the, the things that like really like stays in my belly and stays like good is bananas. Uh, PB&J. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly, yep. toast, and tea. Or, or water, you know. Sometimes I drink Coke, sometimes. Sometimes. Mm, sometimes, not a lot, but like it's just like sips. Yeah. You know, yeah, just yeah, yeah, sips. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not really a lot. like. I get like the little, the little bottle that you can screw up and just like yeah. take a sip for just a little like caffeine boost. Yeah, but that was a good question, Sufian. That was a good question. Uh, also, the night before, what do you eat the night before? So, personally, that's that's personally, for me personally, I do like. Since years, every single tournament, I do like and I prefer pasta, right, with so, uh, tomato sauce and either tuna or seafood. Yes, some some type of protein, but like either tuna or seafood. That's my favorite. Then I then I drink then I drink Coke at night. So that's goes with a Coke or Pepsi or whatever. Whatever soda that I'm in the mood like for. Italian things. But like that's my favorite thing to do just right after um, after each each weight cut. Also a nice smoothie. Like right after you after weigh after weigh-ins, I get a really nice smoothie. Has like protein. Uh, my favorite smoothie is uh, I put in uh, I put in like two scoops of protein. Which is like 25 grams of protein. Yes, yeah, two scoops of protein, and I put nuts on it. I put dates. I put avocado, um, banana, and um, what else? Strawberry. So it's like banana, avocado. And you do yours with water, not with milk. Yeah, not with milk. I do not with, with milk. milk. Not with milk. I just go with. I just go with water. Sometimes, it, like if I'm doing just the avocado with nuts and. Um, if I'm doing avocado with nuts, uh, dates, and uh, banana, I will go with milk. I'll put milk yeah, on. Yeah, because that is that thick. And I put honey on it. But like if I'm just doing a regular one, and I just like put water on it, I don't really like put the extra. The, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. So we just like talk about like. My eating habits. That's personally me. I don't know about Kristen. Yeah, she have different eat. ways. Yeah, I, Everyone I, have different I ways. I usually like having um, some vegetables after, after, well, I always, after I cut weight, I love to have a chocolate milk. Um, I feel really good having a chocolate milk very, like, immediately after weigh-ins. Um, and then for dinner, I usually love to have a salad and some pasta. I want to make sure I have some veggies and some carbs. Oh, similar. Let's try again. Italian food is the best food. I don't know anything about that. Moroccan, Moroccan food is the best food. But you love Italian things. Sometimes. <laughs> not all. Not all the Italian things. Fifty percent Italian things. You're not hundred percent. Fifty percent. I'm married to an American. You just like just yeah, denounce that you're an 50% American. Fifty percent Italian, fifty percent all other. You just denounce. You literally white. just denounce that you're an American. I'm Italian. In heart. I'm Italian I'm not. and half a bunch of other stuff American. Just like you're Moroccan American. Well, I'm pure Moroccan. But you're American also because you're okay. citizenship. Okay, that's same. just like a I'm citizenship. You're wonderful. No, you're born. <laughs> You're born, you're born and raised in, in America. Right, but my grandpa's from Italy, so okay. I'm half Italian, and half a bunch of white So that, stuff. that, that's a different and topic, that's a different topic. Right. I am born and raised in Morocco. Right, 100% 100% Moroccan, and 100% African American. True. Which is like a lot of people don't think that I am an African American. When I say that technically African, I'm technically an African and American. Whenever like I put it on, they don't say. Um, <laughs> I think Brazilian food is the best. 
No, Christian said bratwurst is the best from Germany. Oh. <laughs> I, Christian, my favorite thing in Germany are the pretzels. Pretzels. I like couldn't, everywhere we went, I was like, Jeez. hold on one second, gonna get a pretzel. Hold on one second, gonna get a pretzel. I was like, could have done a, a taste testing of every pretzel. Oh man, yeah. The, the oh, German, yeah. German food is good though. German food is good. Uh, I've, I've had, yeah, yeah, I've had, I've had couple, couple of good meals there. It's you know? brutal. Oh. But like the majority, the majority of the places that I visit in Germany were like Turkish places. Though I do not know if you would, they were like German food, but I was like eating good food from Turkish places that lives in Germany. So I do not know if that was like Turkish food. Or German food, but, but it was delicious. Like you also have this amazing ability to find, um, like Middle Eastern food, no matter where you are. I, no matter where I am, I need to find Do my you food. Remember when we were in Japan? We were like in the middle of nowhere, and mm -hmm. you found uh, you found a kebab food cart. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> how did you find a bun every time in this town? So. <laughs> <laughs> we were like in Japan, right? Yeah. We were like in Scuba. I don't know. Scuba. That, that's that's Scuba. Scuba. I was in Scuba. That was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it was like rice paddy yeah, fields. That was, yeah. Robots in the mall. Yeah. And then you found the one Arab guy that had a food truck, and then yeah. he's like, And the oh! guy, the guy was like so happy to see another Arab man. <laughs> um, he gave us the food. I, 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 I brought the money, and I was like, you know, uh, trying to pay the guy. He didn't want to get paid. He just didn't want to get paid. And I'm like, <laughs> bro. So and he would, because that's again, like how to see like people, how to treat other people. Did He was there by himself probably yeah. for. You were just like being nice and talking. Right. To so we were chatting for a while and he was yeah. like, oh man, you're an Arab. So just get your meal for free. Man, can you get that in America? Can someone just like walk into someone that you know and he's going to be like, here's your meal. Without pain? Yes, of course, if they like you. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> no, no I, 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 nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's going to happen. It happens all the time. No, for me, yes. <laughs> for me, yes. I, it happened a couple times in anywhere, like everywhere I went. Like I went to Paris. Um, I was in Paris and I was with, uh, with friends with mine and they invited me over. Uh, everything is paid for. Like I was like food, Moroccan food, whatever food you want. You know, it's just it's kind of like <laughs> kind of crazy. But I need to try that. Fred host the that's that's favorite cardio judo exercise. Favorite cardio. Ooh. Uh, judo specific or like that helps judo. Judo specific. So judo specific, I would say like intervals, you know, like the intervals is best for for judo. What do you like mean like, like the thirty thirty seconds, you know, like you can do it with station stations. So stationary workout with weight or without a weight with a chikomi, you can do that, and you can build your cardio going in. So you're saying like an HIIT workout? Yeah. Like so high and yeah high intensity intervals, uh, it's good. For, for building your endurance, but it's nothing better than just like doing live. But, but like you'll do HIIT like in judo class also. Like yeah. I've had you put me through workouts where it's like 30 seconds fit-ins, 10 seconds off, 30 seconds push-ups. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just trying to like clarify. Mm -hmm. Like 10 seconds off, then it's like 30 seconds throws, 10 seconds off, 30 seconds grip moving, 10 seconds off. 30 seconds of combos, yeah, like... Doing HIT. Yeah, yeah I'm High just intensity just intervals. ensuring Fine. that as great as you're yeah. doing... Yeah, but like you can, you, 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 can, you can do that. You can do that with Ochikomi. You can do that with uh, just like outside in the field. If you don't have anything, you can just run. You do it as a run. You can do it with bands. You can do it with weights. With weights. Yeah. But like you just have to adjust and readjust. Now, we're going to come to program design again. Program design is, 
when what, what's your what's your when is your tournament when you should be doing the intervals and what type of intervals you're going to be doing and how long because you don't want to like mess up with your with your periods in training because there is periods and phases the pre-competition when there is nothing when when you have like competition and and when you just like far away from competition you know what i'm saying well and i think so you should probably clarify like you you have you know national strength training certification you have um You've been certified in two by two different organizations in like how to build program design. Program yeah. design. Yeah. So you really understand the, the fact, and and so I only say this because like many people may not understand how to build up or plateau. Well, they they depending anyone on anyone season. anyone that like wants to have train first things that he should think about is what's his goal. Yeah. That's that's the thing, because if you don't have a goal, you can't set a program. You can't just go to the gym and say like, okay, I'm going to the gym because I just want to lift. No, what's your goal from lifting? Right. What's your goal from doing judo? What's your goal from doing jujitsu? Right. Okay, compete. Okay, no problem. Competing. When is your when is your competition? Yeah. Now you need to set a time and a date, right, for your competition. Then you start building now. Backwards, you work backwards. Right. So you you have your pre-competition season, yep. where you can just uh, bulk. bulk up or do whatever, like build your endurance, build your endurance. You know, yep. it's like you do a physical, uh, a general physical preparation, which is like general. You can build everything. Now the pre-competition season, which is like a I would say like two months before competition. So then you start being more specific, what you're gonna be should be doing. You're focusing on the technique, the speed, the endur like not the endurance, the speed and, and, and uh, the technique and the explosiveness, the execution of the technique. Now when the competition time is there, then you start focusing on just like the finesse, the finish, everything. You're working on your mental strength right now. You work on your uh, your finishing techniques, and that's it. Speed, boom, 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 and explosiveness. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Yeah. And and I know that like whenever whenever I was trying to train, um, and you were you were coaching me um, during that like off season. That's when you were like, this is the time to learn and add new techniques to your repertoire. Like yeah. you don't add those in that month before your tournament no you can't you add it when you're like strength training when you're like you're building your body you're building your mind you're building your techniques and then you have something new to your repertoire well, there, there is a saying that like if you draw a technique a thousand times you're gonna be better at that technique right. but if you dr uh, uh, draw like a thousand techniques one time right. you're never gonna progress so it's like my dad would always say, you have to right. do a technique 10,000 times, so like just 300 you, a day for a month, you have, and then you can you, do it. <laughs> you have to you have to you have to be able to do that one personal technique that you do the specific one that you do yeah, your go -to. from from different angle different positions different resistance different all like yeah koga the, like you can you see it on you but from anywhere from any entry like doesn't matter if they're expecting like, it you can get to the right. throw well you see like high level athletes when you go to see the high level athletes they're not just going to go and do goki waza on people no, right. they're just gonna go in and know one technique and that technique that they do, they know it like okay. peanut butter and jelly. That's it, they go in and yeah. boom. Yeah. Yeah. So, can't be... Yeah, it's becoming a specialist. Right, yeah. so you you need to be specific and special, specialize in one thing, do it over and over and over and over and over. I, everything, every time I say this, repetitions makes the perfection. So yeah. every time you repeat something, you get better at it. Yeah. You know, so choose what you want to do. Choose what what's your favorite thing. Right. Then you start going for it. Yeah. I think your strength is more important when competing at high level tournaments. Uh, it needs to be balanced. Uh, strength and techniques needs to have a balance. If you like. Of course, strength is gonna 
as as of now, judo now, it's strength. It, it plays a lot of. I'm gonna say. A large role. A large ro role, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, technique, of course, technique. You have to be technical, but not to the points that like crazy technical. Or as we we say before, just one technique. You choose the technique that you want. You build that around it, and you build the strength around it. So. I actually think that the most important thing at high level tournaments. Mm -hmm. And it is, is the mental game. Because most people, if they have become the top in their country or the top two in their country, and they're going to these international events, yeah. a lot of times it's not the person that is the strongest, and it's not the person with the best technique that wins. Like, I have good technique, and I didn't win at those things. But it wasn't because my judo's bad. It's because at that level, there is a mental strength that, that these athletes have where they can they have visualized hitting that technique that they've practiced no matter what not giving a crap who's in front of them having a plan for if this person's stronger than me this is what I'm going to do and kind of a like I don't give a crap this is my mat and this is my day so I actually think and this is coming from someone who is not a high level, like not the high, but I think the mental piece may be the difference between those people that are winning at high level and. I, I agree at certain. I agree at certain points. I agree at certain points. Like mental strength is something that is essential in judo. Every athlete that reaches a certain level is mentally strong, because it, it just like it can't be. You can't be a champion if you're not mentally strong. Just like, I'm not going to say it, like, even at the lower level, even at the national level, in, it means that you're like mentally strong into your national level. Now, you keep progressing and the level of the competition change. Now, there is a lot of things beside the mental training. You have to be fit. You have to, like, it's just like it's everything. It's not just one thing or two things. Right. And it's not like just strength or technique. You have to be technically good at what you do, but at the same time, you have to be physically strong and mentally strong, which is, it, it's all of it. You can't just like be like favorizing one thing or two. Yeah. No, it's yeah. all. Yeah. Because that's what we call it. The high, that's why is it a high, high level. level. Yeah. That's why is it the high level. Yeah. You can get through local right. events you being can, a strong guy right. or you, having a good technique. You, you can go to a local tournament yeah. right here and you can just blast everyone. Because that day, okay, it's your day and it's local and you're not afraid and you're not doing, like, you're technically okay, you know, not everyone... Like your technique's better than the people. Better than the people at that day, or, or better, or better you're people at that turn. Stronger tournament. than everyone that day. So, but when you reach at certain level, and when you go to the highest level, everyone is the same. Yeah. Like everyone knows the technique. Everyone know. Everyone has favorite technique. Everyone is strong physically because the 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 the, the, the training that they go through. It's I'm gonna say like everyone is doing. Yeah, everyone is working yeah. hard. Yeah. Everyone is grinding. You know, when you go and you say like top 100 in the world ranking list, yeah. all of them, all of them are like good. Even the top 200, like you can get someone that it's not even ranked, but like he's good and he's a high level competitor. He can go in and blast everyone because it's, it has everything, you know, so it just can't be one or two. It has to be all combined. Oh. It doesn't get talked about enough. No, it's, it's, I agree about like being mentally strong. Being mentally strong is good. Being mentally strong is good. It's a, a, at certain levels. But not everything. It's not everything. No, I didn't say that. So, what are other questions that we've been thrown to us? Um, I know that, uh, 
trying to think about the other one that got sent. Um, I should have written it down. Does that answer your question, Christian? How do you get mentally strong for the tournament? Mental preps. Um, Self-talks, self-motivation, build up your, your, your strength, uh, watch your videos. I watch my videos and um, I try to, like, how am I going to say, like, try to get to, like, like surround myself with people that is going to help me up. Or were you born that way? What? He said, or were you born that way? <laughs> Keep going. Who Can said that? I wasn't born that way, but surround yourself with yeah, I surround yourself with people. Try to surround yourself with people that like can help you up, because in a certain times or into a like high level, if you surround with yourself with people that like downgrade you, you're never gonna you're never gonna achieve anything. Like, and a high level athlete is like a baby, a fragile baby. So, in the build, everything is going to mess with the brain. So, you have to get to a certain level that, like, you need to pass that by, like, having self-motivation. Like, you, you, need to, you need to create that self-motivation thing. Uh, how am I going to say it? Like, read, read book about, like, high-level athletes, you know. That's one thing. Uh, watch movies about... Uh, legends like people that like really like underdogs. become something yeah. underdogs like you create your own story you want to like as I say again it all comes to your goals if you want to become a world champion you're not gonna look at uh, stories of like people that like just become regional, regional champion, champion. Yeah. now you need to look at stories that like people are like world champions uh, people that like how they become a world champion, how they get mentally strong. I'm not gonna say you're gonna imitate, but you take what you can. It's gonna help you and improve your 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 mental strength, and also by like not giving up because life it's like judo first it cheats you like how to get up from each setbacks or like each every time you you you're down you get up and you fight. Every time you're down. You get up and you fight, you know, and that's that's how judo is. So you need to be strong to get up. So you have to build that mental strength to be able to do that every single time. Okay, okay, this is what I'm doing, and this is me personally. I know that like some of the stuff that that you do for for figuring out what motivates you, like Olive will find, and I will too, like uh, stuff on YouTube or or podcasts like speeches that are motivating to him like for before he works out and like save them as a favorite and listen to it like before bed or listen to it right before a workout to like, like hype you up and get you excited and get you feeling confident. Uh, some of the other things that you can do to just help build confidence also is after your training, if you have a notebook and you keep note of the things that are improving yeah. and the things you're proud of, right? So if there's a throw that you've been trying to hit for a month and then you finally hit it, you know, you write that down. If somebody says, like, they acknowledge that something in your game is improving, you write it down. And they all those little things may seem small at the time, but in a month and you go back and look at the daily Thing that you're proud of or you're confident in or that was a win, all of a sudden you start seeing all the good in yourself instead of the negative things. You know, you, you call out the feelings that you have in a success in overcoming something. And, and as that book gets filled up, like your belief in yourself and your confidence and your motivation, it just grows and grows. That's, that's true, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Uh, I also like use this um, this app. I'm not endorsing it, 
because I'm not sponsored by any by them but I used it as just for me I use it's called head sharp so this app has everything that can prepare you from one day to three days to a week to two weeks to months and can also like give you like a note like where you can write everything about like your mental preparation it gives you speeches gives you things that like keeps you motivated all the time i've been using it for a while now but it's 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 really good app again i'm not endorsing it because we probably like have other app it's a free app i like what it's free if it's, free, it's free. if it's free, it's for me. Um, <laughs> so again, uh, that's what I do. That's how I help Im improve my mental strength. Yeah, there's, there's uh, it's also like, it's also like, I read a lot about mental preparation and strength training. So that's what helps me. Uh, let's. I'm gonna move on from this. So Sufian says, do you believe that strength training may shape your mental? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like if you strong physically, you always think that you you're the strongest person. You're mentally like trying to go for the kill. You're trying to go. You so calm. Like strength training, really improve your 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 strength, your mental strength. Because let's see, if you're a one forty five pounder, right, squatting four hundred pound person coming to grab you is nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. Right? Bench pressing like around, uh, I'm going to say, 325, 325 pound or like 225 pound as a 145. That's pretty good. But even like on a more basic level, right? When you're bench pressing, right? Yeah. And you're you're going for for you know that that ninth and tenth rep, and like you're in, and you want to die and you want to quit, all those things that you're like saying to yourself to like push you through and and tell yourself to not quit, right? Mm -hmm. All those little things, those are the exact mental growths and strengths that like carry over into judo practice and that get you through. And so when you're feeling physically tired in judo, it's like, oh no, I'm going to push through this the way I pushed through in the gym, right? No, I said more than a sentence, so you're doing something else again? No. Okay. Okay. So I'm just how like do trying. You write how do you write the app? Spell it? Yep. Oh, it head sharp. Yep. So why don't you just show a visual of it up on the screen? Mm. It's not it. No, I'm just trying to get. So. Does it say head sharp at the no. top? It's the, it's the uh, accent. <laughs> what do you mean the accent? The, 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 the spelling. It's H -E -A -D. So it's head sharp. Right. It's, how I'm going to say. This is what it looks like. But it's H-E-A-D-S-H-A-R-P. Head sharp. Right? Yeah. yeah. Just head sharp. Well, yeah, it kind of sounds like shark when you say it. Head sharp. This is the app. Mm, I don't know if that's reflectable or not. It looks like. Yep, it's open. Yeah, and there you it's, go. You spelled it right. That's it. Yep. And it's uh, it's free. It's free, and I've I've been using it. It's really good. So every single time I try to just like put things on it. Uh, sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't, because that's how I work, that's how I function in real life in general. So, <laughs> but like it's a really good app. You're gonna, you're gonna leave the, the YouTube video and they're gonna contact you and be like, oh, are we gonna sponsor you? You have like a Head Sharp t shirt next week. <laughs> oh, hopefully, if they hear me like right now, if they wanna sponsor me, I'm, I'm actually free and open for sponsors. <laughs> Like if anyone wants to sponsor, you know, we're going for this run, you know, <laughs> trying to do it. Uh, oh, you took your Adidas gear and your and your protein shakes from uh, Okay, Shakely. so I'm actually like sponsored by Shakely. 
like shake them out protein and it's sponsored by Adidas for, your geese. for my geese and I'm sponsored by um, what's it called G strength is your G strength as my lifting this is what I go like I, I train gym's there awesome. gyms is really awesome so like, like if you're in Philadelphia if you're around Philadelphia you guys should check them out they're really good really good guys really humble educated they know what to do, yeah. you know, they know what to do. Um, yeah, I've been very lucky with the support that so, you've done. What do you... Oh, the, um, the server. Yeah. I'm having a mind blank. Me too. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Ramadan Mubarak to you as well. Ramadan Mubarak to you as well. Um, yeah. yeah, but like, um, you should get a beard sponsor. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, maybe. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. Beard sponsor. Beard sponsor. You'd have to have a bigger beard or someone to sponsor it. It's not like a, you need to have stuff growing in it. But <laughs> it's just like a normal beard right now. It's not anything special. It's okay. It's okay. Like it looks. It looks okay, right? No. It needs to be like like down here, and then you can like you could leave snacks in it for later. So when you're working out, you could just pull the peanut butter and jelly yeah, but out of your beard. <laughs> Let me, let me turn the <laughs> celebrating Ramadan which is uh, Ramadan is the most holiest months of the Muslim people you know um, how do I'm gonna how do I'm gonna start it you know I'm just like trying to explain it so what is Ramadan Ramadan is when Muslims fast from a certain time to a certain time, from the sun's up to the sun's down, right? right? And and Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim calendar. So the Muslim calendar has twelve months as the normal calendar, and Ramadan is the name of the month, the ninth month. So Muslims goes by the lunar calendar, right? Which like they go like every time the moon change that's it's 11 days 11 different. days different yeah, time regular, right than the regular yearly. yeah each year like each year ramadan comes like 11 days sooner, sooner than 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 the year yeah than the year after so um where muslims uh how i'm gonna say uh abstain from water food uh bad things sex sex uh during the day um it's like reminds me of lent like you give up something but you guys give up a lot more than the yeah way lent rolls, but it's like you're giving up something and practicing like the, yeah the purity. It's, but it's it's isn't that is it's the you celebrate that month because like that's the month 
that so is the the Ramadan is the month of the Quran which is like the holy book is when the Quran the holy book was revealed to our prophet peace be open him it's that that time that's okay, why so like, you're celebrating like this is the time of year yeah right okay and so that's like when you see a lot of Muslims like pray a lot pray extra do give charities you know because it's a holy month it's like the whole month it's like something giving. it's a given month for them it's like something that it shows how I'm gonna say how like they should be all year. Yeah, right? like, they should be all year doing that. But like it's gonna you're gonna see them doing that as an extra on Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. Beards and a mustache sponsor. Mustache sponsor. Too. Omar, you'd have to like fight you for a mustache. Omar, sponsor you too. always have Omar, you always have a better mustache than mine. You know. No. Alice can yeah. never do the like turning thing. Yeah, you'll always have a better mustache. <laughs> So, yeah, so what it what, what was, so that was, that was it about Ramadan, you know. Um, um, we've gotten a question about um, how to work on uh, grip training. It, it, what do you mean how to work on grip training? Like, like, give, uh, during COVID, like, how can you work on your grip strength and your grip training? Well, during COVID, everything is special, so. I know it is. Okay, so everything that you want to do is if you have a gi, just work in a gi. Just like work uh, high intensity intervals, doing just the gi, holding it up straight, now moving up to the same way that you do your gripping, that you do your normal gripping, and try to make your forearm, uh, how I'm going to say, yeah, work out your, your forearm till like it's, uh, given up, yeah. you know, like, that like yeah, is all until you, up. yeah, until you get your, your arm, like, can't, can't hold anymore, now, you work it for time, or you work it until, like, however you want, like, either you can time it, you do 30 seconds, and you change the exercise, but you keep, you still keep going, or you can work it until, like, your arm is given up, so, I, literally, either way. whatever you want, and um, different things. If you have a pull-up bar in the house, if you, well, I'm gonna say, if you're privileged enough to have a pull-up bar during this COVID time at your house, you can just like hang in a gi and make the holds and the pull-ups on the gi. Those are like the best to improve your your gripping. Uh, the second, uh, the third thing is you have someone, you have a partner in the house with you. Also, you can you can do that. You can wear the gi and make your opponents hold, uh, make your, your partner hold you and you just like, or you hold your partner and just let him yank at your hand and try to uh, keep your grip. Keep, tr you're going to try to keep your break, your grip. And your, your partner needs to take off that hand. And you keep doing it and you do it a couple times. And that will help improve your, your grip and uh, see, uh, your gripping in this time. I know some other stuff like you would have me do. Like just like holding a weight. Like if you have a weight. Yeah. Like just holding a weight until you give out. Yeah, you know? but that's helping all like the upper body. Switching the weight between the hands. Yeah, so gripping is, or you have, uh, if you have what I'm going to say, like just like not a dimple like a weight a plate yeah. a weight a plate you just like hold it with your finger right Literally that's what you were saying. doing okay okay <laughs> well, i was i was thinking that you, you said I, w I was thinking that you just like holding it straight yeah it's like the okay the swap the swap yeah the like swap. you throw in, you throw in the plates and when you throw in the plates you're holding it with your finger and that's that's a good way to improve you help improve your strength your grip strength so what else Oh. Joseph from there. It's Becky. Allah. How did you get such a beautiful and intelligent wife? <laughs> ah, good question. Good question. I'm not answering that question. I skip. Persistence. <laughs> Persistence. I'm so resilient. Yeah. You know, I like since I was born, I do not like giving up. So if I like something, I chase it, and if I chase things. I get it. That's how I am. That's how I work. Well, like, follow That's me how I function. Every day. Be like, 
Krista, Krista, do you have boyfriend? And I was like, you don't speak English. And the next day, Krista, Krista, do you have boyfriend? Krista, Krista, <laughs> Krista, work out, work out. Do you have boyfriend yet? Krista. Of course, I didn't even speak English when I got her, so that shows you how persistent I am. Krista, yeah. Krista. I did not speak any English. You are so lucky to have okay. such an intelligent and beautiful wife. I am. I did not say anything about that. I'm just sad. <laughs> Spent eight years of a beautiful life. So, eight years of good and bad. It's not just it's good. Wonderful. It's not all good, but there is ups and downs as every family in the world. Okay? But, I do appreciate her a lot. She is a, she's a good woman. She's a good wife. That's why I kept her. <laughs> <laughs> Do all high level judokas have more aggressive style when competing? Or are they also successful judokas that are defensive and wait for a chance to counter? Uh, we love you both. We love you too. We love you too. Well, you should visit us soon. Yeah. We should visit them and go okay. to their fire pit. Okay, well, we should Answer visit. Answer Christian's question about uh, the aggressive style versus the waiting. Uh, I'm going to say every single... I'm not going to speak of all the athletes because you do not know what goes in, in their mind, you know? But the good things that if you're an aggressive... If, if you, if you want to succeed... In judo, you need to be all the time the aggressor. You need to be aggressive. But it's going to be, again, it's going to be depends from a person to a person, from an athlete to an athlete. Certain, love, certain athletes, they will show their aggressiveness. They will show it. Certain athletes, you'll never see it. They're like vivid. They're like, how am I going to say? Uh, you see nothing in them, but they're like so aggressive. So I'm going to say Every athlete, I'm not... Aggression doesn't mean you're rushing. You know? Right. Aggressive. There can be athletes that are aggressive, but their games are counter games, right? Okay. They, they are aggressive in moving the person where they want that person to be so the person feels safe for an attack so they can execute their counter, right? Yeah. There are ones that are aggressive with their gripping so that they can get you in a spot where they're controlling and they may never actually attack but their gripping is so aggressive that they shido out the other yeah. person so like aggressive doesn't necessarily equate to rushing attacks it's it's mental aggression in knowing your game plan and executing your game plan and not following whatever their whatever game, their plan, game is, plan is yeah. right yeah like so I do think that everyone at that level has mental aggression in terms of like, this yeah. is what I'm executing. I'm, yeah. And their, their game may be a counter game or a gripping game. It doesn't necessarily have to mean aggressive, like, grip throw. Yeah. Well, she said it better than I, you know. She, that's why I like she's here with me. <laughs> that's she, it. she can correct that. <laughs> <sighs> but the many that was w one a wonderful, wonderful question. Uh, yeah, Christian. So I think you are aggressive, but in a different way. You may not see it. You may not see that you are aggressive, but you are. Yeah. Like it's it just like in a different ways. Like you are aggressive in a different ways. It could be like you, uh, in your gripping, in your movements, in your ability to counter your opponents, in your ability to execute a technique, and your favorite technique. You can be just aggressive on your executing your favorite technique. That's it. Like when you when you're trying to do that, you're like, oh, you're so excited. You're like, ah, oh, I'm trying to finish it, and that's how you show your aggressiveness. But other people have different reaction to that. Are there other questions? Imad Darwish, can you post more HIIT judo drills, please? By the way, I like your judo spirit, bro. 
keep it up. You can definitely do more HIT judo drills. Okay, Ahmed, yes. We will we will try to post more videos about like uh high interest uh high intensity interval training. Uh We've been posting couple with with just like with the gi uh with without a gi with like equipments. But the next time what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do an each it uh, interval training, uh just doing a ochikomi with a partner, and uh, that's it. And yeah, that's good. I can yeah, like. I can show a couple version of that. Thank you very much for liking my videos. Yeah, if you like it, yeah, subscribe at my channel. Make sure to share it and like this post so for more views for people can see it thank you thank you though uh any other questions i yeah, really don't that. remember any other ones i know that i have to go soon because i should probably start getting dinner ready so okay so uh, what what's what other questions why is your yeah. work so wonderful no self-submitted now <laughs> Oh, but like... I mean, it can be a one-word answer about why she's so wonderful. We're all waiting. I am fasting. Then just why is she wonderful? I'm just going to say that I am fasting. That's not an answer. That's a good answer. Terrible answer. Why is she wonderful? Okay, guys, I <laughs> hope that we, you know, <laughs> we answer all your questions for today. Thank you for watching us. Uh, thank you for watching us. Please like this post, share it with your friend, subscribe at our channel. And let us know if you have uh, suggestions or, or other requests for future videos. Right. Well is always uh, willing to put together stuff to help out the judo community. That's, that's good. If you have any questions, just write it down. Keep that. We keep it alive. Uh, chat open so you can write your questions and if I didn't see it right now or if we see it um, later uh, we can do another live and we can answer your questions but like there was it, it was good today I think I don't know that we had to answer uh, all these questions and uh, have a good night have a good night everybody thank you again bye bye so we're gonna close this live stream